welcome to episode two in this series of videos dedicated to the electric guitar. My name is Ed East and today I'm going to be taking a look at this little beauty. This is the Epiphone Les Paul SL. It is very much an entry-level guitar. I believe it is the cheapest guitar that Epiphone sell. Um, so it's going to be a guitar that's considered by people who are new to the guitar, perhaps don't want to spend too much money to find out if they like it or not. Um, but also for more experienced guitarists, I think, um, who might perhaps modify it, upgrade it, just to make it a little bit more um, playable and usable. The guitars have been around a couple of years. They, um, I believe they sell online at the moment just around about the hundred bucks mark. Um, they come in various colors, blue, black. Um, this, <clears throat> this is called Sunset Yellow. Um, it's not quite TV yellow. Uh, originally it, this guitar caught my eye um, specifically because you don't see that many yellow electric guitars around. Um, if you've seen my other video, um, the review of Harley Benton's TV Yellow DC Junior, um, you will know that I am very much taken by the, the TV Yellow color. This doesn't quite do that, but it's still a fun color um, in all respects. The, as far as I can see, the design is a very knowing nod to the classic Gibson Melody Maker which was a guitar that Gibson brought out um, many, many years ago, decades ago, um, that didn't really take off and was one of the few Gibson guitars that has single coil pickups. And um, so this, it's, for me, it's very odd to see a Les Paul style guitar with single coils. Um, so, I find that a very interesting feature, and that's that's definitely a feature of the Melody Maker. Melody Maker also has these strange little kind of cut-out bits on the pick guard and this bulbous bit at the bottom. Um, so, in itself, it is it is a nice um, a nice homage, perhaps, to the Melody Maker for very little money. Um, I'm just going to tune it up. Well, there I already notice um, something that you notice on bottom of the range guitars, the um, the machine heads, which is what we call these tuning pegs at the top, are very cheap and they don't do a great job. I mean, of course, you can tune the guitar, but I expect it's going to go out of tune very quickly. Um, I believe people call these trapezoid tuners, which is generally seen as a derogatory term, I think. Um, because when you tune up to a note, um, it's pretty much fine, but you can quite often you notice that when you're tuning, tuning it down, it, the note doesn't change and then it slips quite a large interval. Um, it's always advisable when you're tuning anyway to tune down below the note and then tune up to it. Um, I think that's generally why that is advised because often tuners don't, don't do the, the job that they're supposed to. It's not a problem. I don't think that's a problem. Um, upgrading the tuners is an easy modification to make. It's just unscrewing a few screws and replacing and screwing a few others in. Um, so, not a big deal. Let's, uh, let's hear what it sounds like. I'm playing through my Fender DeVille, just uh, out of the bottom of the picture here today. Um, single coil pickups for me they seem to be begging to go through a fender amp
so the pickups sound nice. Um, they're certainly quite hot, they're quite loud, um, and you would have noticed when I started out on the bridge pickup, and when I mixed in the neck pickup, the tone got considerably beefier and, and deeper. Um, so that's nice, that's nice tonal quality. They sound to me like um, ceramic pickups, so, and I, I would be very surprised in a guitar of this price if you would have um, nice proper Alnico magnets in the pickups. Um, it's very unlikely. So I have my um, pedal board, I have a, a looper pedal on here which um, I will probably throw on when I try out some sounds now. So don't be surprised that you hear more than one person playing. It's a lot of fun to play on. Um, I'm very impressed with the sound. I mean, just to think that you get not only good sounding pickups, but also an entire guitar for under a hundred bucks. It's pretty impressive. Um, and the sound that's coming out of these pickups really does work well in pedals. I mean, listen. <laughs> Um, that's really, really quite fun. Um, okay, the only downside that I have really come across on this guitar is the um, machine heads, the tuners. Cheap, but that's to be expected on this kind of a guitar. And uh, the fret ends are not as smooth as they could be. They're a little bit catchy, your fingers catch on them a bit, you feel like feel like you're losing some skin when you're moving up and down the fretboard, but um, really, these are, are minor details. It's very easy to file down the edges of the frets so that they are nice and smooth and they don't bother you. It's, uh, it's very fun playing a Les Paul style guitar with single coil pickups because um, for some reason it just makes you want to rock out. Um, I don't know I still don't know why guitar manufacturers have to put plastic on the pickguards. The thing that really, it's, it's such a minor bugbear, but it really does bother me because you peel it off and then you inevitably get some that, that sticks around underneath the, underneath the volume and tone controls. And you have to take the, the control off to get it off and then it's still stuck underneath the nut and underneath the actual tone pot and so really to get it off you would have to take the entire pick guard off undo the, the tone pot take the plastic off and put it back on I don't see the point the last thing I want to do when I get a new guitar is instantly take the pick guard off and Presumably the plastic is there to stop the pick guard getting scratched Except it's a scratch plate. That's exactly what it's there for. It's to the pick guard is to stop the guitar getting scratched and So if 
the pick guard could potentially get scratched, then why not have plastic over the entire guitar? They managed to deliver the guitar without plastic over it and without scratches, so then why can't they do the same with the pick guard? It's, like I say, it's um, a very minor pet hate of mine, but um, there it is. Other than that, this is a fantastically fun little guitar. It's light, it's so light. It's probably the lightest electric guitar I, I now own. Um, it's ideal for beginners, really. You can't go wrong. You can spend under a hundred bucks. And if you, had, if you end up not liking playing the guitar, then um, you haven't lost a great deal. Um, I doubt that the resale value is very, very good. So, you're probably not going to get your hundred bucks when you try and sell it secondhand, but that doesn't matter. It's it's. Um, I don't think you would want to sell it. It's just fun to have around. It's a good little piece. I think of this little video. Um, I can heartily recommend this guitar. It is a fun little piece of kit. Can't really go wrong with it. It's um, cheap and cheerful, but a lot of fun for your money. And um, I think beginners to the guitar and um, and old hacks as well who just fancy a little bit of light relief. Um, We'll have a lot of fun with this guitar.